I never tried drugs in school. I, um, I was a good student and I didn't really have a lot of friends because I moved around so much. I, I guess I drank a lot, but I didn't, I didn't, I never even tried marijuana. Like I never tried anything like that. And then when I was 27, I was injured at work and they put me on painkillers. So I kinda, I don't know, I kinda lost myself, I guess, almost immediately. I started um, taking more than prescribed and then I started um, doctor shopping and uh, people at work said that if I snorted it, it worked better, last longer, and then it was just a short jump to shooting it. At first I didn't notice, I didn't know that I was becoming addicted. I didn't realize that you could even be addicted to medicine from a doctor. And so when my medicine just stopped working and I felt the pain more, I would go back to my doctor and my doctor would um, just kind of slightly alter my prescription from like Vicodin to Percocet or something like that, you know. And uh, when that stopped working, I just started making appointments to other doctors or going to the ER and going, you know, I have a lot of pain, you know, whatever. I don't guess I realized when when it completely consumed me, but it got to the point where I had actually been blacklisted from <laughs> every hospital within a hundred mile radius because I would drive quite a bit. When I started actually buying pills on the streets, that's when it consumed me the most. You know, I would revolve everything around my drug dealers. So I would call in late to work or I would arrange my drug dealer around going to the grocery store or whatever. It was a short jump from cooking pain pills down to shooting meth. So um, when I started shooting meth, it was like I knew I was in trouble. I didn't know how to stop. I stole all the money from our house to get high and our electricity was shut off and people I got high with um, told on me for having the kids in the house without the electric and stuff like that. And then my ex-husband came down and he hadn't seen the kids in, I don't know, like seven years, but he found out that I was high and so he um, got an attorney to have the kids removed from my care. And I was actually out of the house trying to find dope when the sheriff's department came to take him so I didn't even get to say goodbye. When he told me that the sheriff's department came and took them and granted my ex-husband to take them to New York. I was so mad at my husband for <laughs> for not stopping them. So I I was really high and I I picked up a toy box and threw it at his face, like one of the big ones, you know. And he he just put my daughter in his stroller and walked away. My husband had me served with the restraining order two days later and I didn't have anywhere to go. I, I found out the day after my kids were taken that I had three felony warrants that had been put out for my arrest. So within that week I had lost my home and my husband and my kids and I had warrants out for my arrest. It was a lot, and so I, I tried to kill myself because I just didn't think I could come back up from there. But I, I failed. <laughs> I wasn't good at it, <laughs> and so after a little while on the street, like I think a week or so, two weeks maybe, I, I had this 
phone that I stole from a drug dealer friend. <laughs> And I hooked up to Wi-Fi and I messaged a pastor from a church that I used to go to before I got high. He, he ended up coming and getting me, him and another guy from our church, from my old church. And they took me, they took me to eat and like they put me in a hotel room but not like a local motel where, you know, you have to worry about a lot of drug activity. It was actually a Christian owned hotel. And so, my pastor ended up calling the prosecuting attorney and saying, does it matter what program she's in? And he said, no, and the, my pastor said, can it be faith-based? And he was like, yes. So my pastor got me into a faith-based 12-step program, and I did 12 weeks. When I quit meth, it wasn't so much the physical withdrawal as much as it was emotional, mental. In the middle of the night when your mind is going to a thousand different dark places and your skin is crawling, it's, it, was, it was hard. It was hard to not pick up the phone and call people who knew, who understood, but those were the same people who were probably gonna be trying to give me drugs, you know, so. It was hard. The process of being where I am was, I think, excruciating is the best word. Nobody, like nobody believed that I was clean, that I was staying clean, you know, and that I was Dedicated, it took a long time. Today I'm actually 42 months clean. It's, that's, I, I just happened to cross that this morning, but I don't, I would consider myself just fully recovered. It doesn't cross my mind anymore, you know, like I, back when, in the beginning, when it would cross my mind, I would do different things to try and retrain the way I think about drugs as a whole. And I really think that it worked. Now, whenever I think about drugs, I think about sadness and, and pain, you know. And then I've seen the after effects of drugs in my kids, and it's just heartbreaking to know that my, my selfishness has caused them so much pain and I just can't imagine getting high to numb that pain and making them feel more, you know, so it just doesn't even cross my mind anymore.